Hello, welcome to Show Studio. It's another day, another panel. It's the end of Men's Fashion Week, which is not really a week though, but anyway. Men's Fashion Collection London, uh, Autumn Winter 18, uh, 19, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Autumn Winter 19, um, we're going to discuss Maria Farzane, um, which just had a lovely show this afternoon um, with a fantastic panel. Before introducing the panel, I have to thank Cartel for those beautiful chairs we're sitting on, and I want to acknowledge the fact that we're sitting in Show Studio Gallery, surrounded by this artwork made by illustrators and artists for our 100 Women exhibition. Every artwork is on sale here at the gallery and online. So, and let's talk about fashion. Please <laughs> introduce yourself, panelists. Yeah, so I'm Eden Loweth and I am one half of Design Duo Art School. Um, I'm Helen Salam Kalai and I'm a writer and a model. I'm Jay Paul and I'm a freelance writer. I'm Rhys Crisp and I'm the head of buying and creative at LNCC. Great, great diverse panel. Um, okay, every, has everybody seen the show yet? I was at the show, I know yeah. some of us were at the show. Some clips of it. Clips okay, so you've seen yeah. something. Yeah. Um, just a few words before letting you say what you think. I thought it was a very strong show. Um, I must say, I probably was the only person who read the press release before the show started because, and it's very important for the, the, the you know, the, the, the rhythm of the show and what it was. Um, it contained three sentences at the end where Priya was explaining that she wanted us to experience the show and look at the clothes, especially look at the clothes, instead of um, posting them. And so the invitation was a little plastic bag and we were supposed to put our phone in the plastic bag. And I looked around and probably I was the only one yeah. with the phone <laughs> in the plastic bag and everybody was taking pictures. So very hard to obtain that, but then on the other hand, she probably had more publicity by people um, Instagramming. So the model, the cat was very, very short. The model were not walking, but they were on a conveyor, like at the airport when you try to get to your gate fast. So they were on a very slow conveyor. So it started with an, an alarm clock in a bedroom with a door. The door opened, the person wakes up, gets on the conveyor with their phone. So they were like taking selfies, look at themselves, and then they ended up at the end of the catwalk in this see-through cage, which was probably representing life, the office, whatever you go about every day and you're a little bit caged in because you can't escape. And it was very slow and very peaceful, but at the end everybody was stuffed in that cage. And then there was the last model who was trying not to go backwards and being held with her friends there. Anyway, we can discuss the, the, the meaning, the sap text of all of this, but one thing I want to say is that the clothes were very strong. Um, they looked modern, relevant, creative, yet very wearable. Mm -hmm. And so probably um, you will say that, you know, there's something to do with them here. Uh, there was very strong knit. There was some very interesting tailoring and there was a lot of beautiful outerwear. But I'll let you talk now. So whoever wants to start and say what they thought in general and then we can go into details. Well, I thought it was the strongest collection that she's done to date. Um, I studied with Perea at Ravensbourne um, on the BA. So I've known her from the beginning. And Puri has always been very anti-establishment and mm. had a very um, direct opinion of what she wants to do, um, which is why I knew that she would always be successful. Um, but I think what was really exciting about today is that I really saw um, her brand identity in a really new way. Um, I think the quality of the clothes that were, were shown was really strong. I thought the knit was um, really Very outstanding. Strong. I love the um, And also as someone that doesn't necessarily buy uh, st streetwear that she's previously shown, um, there's really stuff in there that I found really desirable and really exciting. Um, and 
as a lover of performance within fashion, there was, I felt like it, it breathed a, something new into the, the format she's been showing in. She's always done something quite performative, like last season she had a presentation by the South Bank where everything was in these massive trucks that mm. her and her dad pulled mm. all the shutters out to show the, the collection. Um, but there was something really refined about this and, um, you know, I think looking at her competitors that may be a bit further along, she's really smashed, like, blown them out of the water today um, because it felt quite raw and it felt like she's actually um, speaking from a place of where her and the community of people that buy her clothes are actually coming from as opposed to something too kind of um, over-educated or hard to understand. It was something really honest. I think that speaks volumes she to her. She also said that in her notes, she said, I don't want too many complications. No. I, want, I want clothes that are seen as such. I found it quite emotional, to be honest, knowing her at the end, because that last look, which I think is the strongest thing she's ever shown, I loved it, the, the women's wear look at the end, yeah. mm. um, which I want. I think it's amazing. <laughs> um, but for me, the way the model interacted at the end with the group of that people, it really signified her for me as a person. I think there'll be, it's the one, the next yeah, it's look. it's not that one, yeah, yeah the next um, For me, that really signifies something that I think she's trying to kind of investigate how she now feels being in this position, because it's been a very quick ascension for both me and for her, you know, in two years, just over two years, we've gone from being a student to now showing it being a in this scale. And she, you know, has grown to 20 stockists globally and has a massive uh, following. So I think she's now starting to really kind of dissect where she wants to develop and how, which is really exciting. Good. It was definitely very well thought through. Yeah. In, through through all different aspects, you know, wanting to create something a little bit unique uh, in terms of away from a traditional catwalk. So that kind of definitely ticked that box in terms of being on the kind of. It was very simple yet strong. Simple yet strong, yeah. and simple yet strong. But you will, will remember it because of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it was different. I think kind of the the move on in terms of the elevation of the product. You know, the, the, the craftsmanship in there was definitely kind of a definite move on for sure. Um, and I think it was very fluid. I think sometimes, you know, particularly in menswear, um, you know, the advice to designers would be, oh, we need some tailoring in there, you know, traditional tailoring in terms of to tick a menswear box. I think sometimes that can jar a collection in a way, whereas I think it was quite fluid in, in the collection today. Do you, do you carry it? Do you buy it? We do. Or are yeah. you going to buy it? No, we do. Yeah, Fair so really? we've been launched for Autumn Winter 18. And so yeah. how, how does it turn? Very well. Very good for a first season, yeah. Uh, and we did an exclusive kind of like T-shirt to commemorate. Yeah, I, was, um, I bought the T-shirt yeah. from you. Yeah, we did, just, <laughs> we did an yeah. installation in our, in our gallery space. And Eden um, said there is a community that of our followers. Do you know the demographic? Do you know who buys? I think it's varied. I mean, you know, kind yeah. of, obviously there is a, you know, a, a kind of set demographic in a way that's kind of similar brands, you know, adjacencies for, for yeah. Aria in terms of that streetwear. I hate saying streetwear. I mean, yeah. I like it's this. not yeah. really streetwear. No, no it's we, not. We, we, streetwear. we actually, we, we call it contemporary and we don't, okay. we don't, we can't, we, contemporary in a way is that the way we separate our buying team and divisions, yeah. um, contemporary is kind of more tr the trend led area in a way. And at the moment, obviously the, the streetwear kind of brands, I hate saying streetwear, so I've got to stop saying it. But those, they're the kind of, you know, the, 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 in terms of not trend, but the kind of commercial trend in a way. Um, so we call it contemporary because that's kind of where it's, it's not, it's not about price point for us. It's more about aesthetic. Okay. I think also when you said who, who are the market, the, the models are. So the guys who were, were actually cast in it, I recognise some of them, and they were begging to come to the after party last. I think it was at Momo's. Yeah. And literally they were all begging to get on the guest list and. I hadn't really heard much about her then, and it was them who actually introduced me to it. More just because there was already a community of people talking about it, and it almost being exclusive because there isn't a massive Instagram following. Mm. So, she uses that Instagram really intelligently, doesn't she? Yeah. Like she places like basically a mix of different images, so it's not just the collection. No. And it's like, you know how sometimes you look at a brand's Instagram and it's very kind of like, here's a thing you can buy. Yeah. yeah. It's very much like it's her inspiration, it ties into her story and the narrative. Like, yeah, we can personal. see the bag yeah. as yeah, well. So yeah. like the, and the, the whole last three so images. Cool. Well, let's talk oh, about that. That's, yeah. that's very interesting because I think one of the things that make her fashion or her you know, style deeper and more thoughtful is that 
she brings in her heritage, but never in an ethnic way, oh. never it's not in not forced. A, but like this, in this collection, you know, you had those um, uh, accessories, but also the jackets with that print that was obviously Middle Eastern. I yeah. mean, I would say Persian. It reminded me of those amazing Persian yeah. rugs that, you know, that, that are in all antique stores. So, uh, but the, it's never to, I don't know how to explain. I don't know what you think, it's but there's saturated. always this reminder of her heritage, which I think is yeah. very interesting That's in a subtle way. I think it ties into the idea of now, like, the same with competition, that a designer has to have, like, a really strong identity. And I think it's just an element of if you can develop a print that's very kind of, if it becomes a constant recurring theme throughout the collections. I think she's done that really well and she's taken similar prints and she's kind of like built on them, put them into mm -hmm. new structures. And it's like, like Eden said, you can see like a brand identity being developed around those kind of motifs. I think what's exciting about this new collection is that there's a subtlety to the way that she's used the print this time. Yeah. yeah. That really um, creates something really exciting and new. So like, You've got the all over pieces like that plastic coated jacket there, but also she's used it in piping details piping on yeah. the trousers, yeah. which I think yeah. are really desirable. Yeah. Um, and I think um, it's really refining ideas of how she can use it um, because it all is, it, she had, works with a factory and craftspeople in Iran that hand block print all of the print. So I know this because she lives, her studio is next door to mine. So I keep seeing these lorries pull up with all of these crates full of uh, Iranian print and me so and she... her mum and dad will be loading it into her Ford Astra. So um, she has... <laughs> no, 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 explain that better. Yeah. What so, are they loading into the so trucks? So we have all of this, um, <laughs> you'll see all of these trucks of, uh, of print, amazing printed fabrics arrive um, and she'll load it all up to pop to the factory to get it all made. So it it all comes, a Yeah, so yeah. these are the, these are the print techniques that she she uses um, and I think what's been really good for her is that she's really used it sensitively but also grown into using these traditional techniques in um, a way that feels modern rather than something that feels too um, heritage it feels yeah. quite fresh I think that's pretty amazing yeah at this <coughs> doing that yeah so that's the way they've been, but they, they, they haven't done it like this in rugs. I thought rugs were, um, how do you say, it's... Like tufted. Yeah. Yeah, but for, for her, it, yeah, this is how she works with the, the okay. traditional wooden block. Okay, so was she born here or...? or... Yes, yeah, so she was born in Hull. Okay, so yeah. she's very British as yeah. well. Yorkshire, <laughs> yeah. Mixed. Yeah, she's proper Yorkshire girl. Yeah. <laughs> So do you, what's your relationship with her? Do you work with her? No, I don't actually. And I don't really work in fashion apart from modeling. modeling. Yeah, but I'm very interested in how she navigates her, I don't know the sphere of identity. It's multifaceted and it shouldn't be necessarily in fashion. What you said was there's a focus so much on where the person's from. So for example, I'm wearing Moa Lola right now and she mm. just had her um, fashion yes, last fashion night. Is. She's a very good friend. So we're very happy, but it's the way she's presenting, well, Lagos boys isn't what Lagos expects and it's not necessarily what Nigerians might even buy. So she's not catering to any type of person. She's representing what she feels is her identity. So I kind of feel like the same with Pariah in the sense of, I don't know who it was, it was you who was saying that the girl at the end is almost representing yeah. her. It's all of these different versions of herself and where she's from and her different environments are, it's completely fluid and they, there shouldn't be binaries. I guess and it ties into that's what I see. Like yeah. Boxing in like that. Yeah, exactly. There shouldn't so be a boxing in. It is fluid. Right? It's fluid, and it's it's the terms of like you can be mixed race like me, but in terms of the culture, not necessarily your race or your color. Color exactly. Like we were just speaking yeah. about how you said, are you are you it half be, Eritrean and half German? Yeah. I'm like I am, but then I'm also very French because I was born in France. It's the same as her, where she's still trying to link herself back to her Iranian heritage, but again, and not in a way that's like, okay, here's like a backdrop of I don't know her family constantly. It's not. It's not. She's not regurgitating the same imagery and the same story because there are so many different stories and they might not even be her own, they might be her families and they might be her that, cultures. That's even more interesting because she's because from here, what, yeah. 
because are the stories that make you then dream and imagine. Yeah. So it's more imagination than actual experience. Yeah. And, it, and then it's subtle. Um, can we talk about the collection a little bit? Maybe we can go back to look number one. Is there, there's no film, there's no video, right? It was quite interesting to see. I would have wanted to show for those that haven't seen it the conveyor and the entering that space. Yeah, I think it's I love really that clever. space yeah. and then standing there and we could also mm. look at them and, and so you know she also said I want you to look at the clothes and actually if you were closer to the cage like me, you could actually then observe all the detail of yeah. the making and she was very clear about the fact that she wanted to go into formal and and and, and real tailoring. Yeah. So I've noticed it a little bit, and you were part of these three days of Fashion Week, um, that everybody's stepping up a notch. Everybody's like, right, that's it. I mean, we are creative, we showed it, but we also want to show that we know what we're, we're doing. Yeah. And so yeah. there's quality going higher and higher and tailoring appearing in streetwear and mm. stuff like that. And she was very clear in her notes that that was important. So I just would like, your take on that and, and tell me if you can see it and what, what's the difference between before and now. I think it's very obvious though, but... Yeah, you can definitely see it in the outerwear. And it's like you were saying that first, like the first look, it's like it's using that detail as like a piping. So it's like yeah. it is a lot more, yeah. there's the emphasis on the kind of like the structure of the jacket. And it's That's just... my favorite look, by the way. Yeah. When the first look came out, I'm like, oh, very good start. Yeah, and there's, there's obviously, you know, there's, there's not as many, not jersey as there has been yeah. previously. Um, and I think that's definitely something that, from a commercial perspective, you know, you kind of always know that a t-shirt will be your entry price point. And, Although that's you know not kind of everything you want to see on the catwalk, you want to see the more elevated pieces. But just to not see any of that in, in, in this in this collection was great, I think, this time because in, in past collections, the print has been it's obviously a key thing, and it, and it is definitely key here. But it's nice to see a departure from it being kind of all encompassing across the whole collection. Um, and again, jersey there was a, there would have been a couple of tees shown as looks in the past few few seasons in the presentations. There were none. None, and I think that's great. Being moving from a presentation to a show, you know. She's, she's definitely thought about that. She's definitely thought that, that it needs to be elevated across all aspects. Yeah. Fabrication, the looks, the styling, um, the different categories to, to be involved in, in, in the collection. Um, it just shows that she's growing, I think. And she's thinking about commercial aspects as but well isn't as isn't it very important? Because I think I'm very passionate about this young generation not being afraid of wanting to actually make money. I mean, there was a time where commercial was a dirty word. And then all, even these groups that were selling for millions are like, oh, it's not commercial. Well, yeah, sort of. But her collaboration with Converse is commercial. Yeah. And also, like, she's I, I a And that's quite business. brilliant. That's brilliant. And it's, it's not a dirty word. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just it's the way you execute it. I think sometimes that the commercial element of, of driving your collection can be driven by other things. And you think about mm. um, stuff outside of your remit and your influence too much. And often that commercial. being the primary kind of focus. Whereas if you've got a DNA and if you, if you are um, doing something a little bit different, um, you kind of have a bit more time. Um, and and, and you, you, can, you can be commercial in that as well as you know, having a point of view. Does commercial meaning not creative? No, it's no. not commercial means no, safe. I, so. I think that people have this implication that commercial means safe because yeah. we still have this very rigid idea of like the menswear customer. And like, oh, he doesn't want to wear print because it's too loud or like is afraid to kind of like, we have that's, this very that's rigid. Gone. That's yeah. gone. But it's like, I think people, when they say commercial, I always saw it as like a stand in for the word safe. Like, don't take risks, don't make anything, because we see men generally, even though that term is like, you know, people buy women's, women buy menswear, men buy women's wear, you know, people, non binary people shop, like, <laughs> they have to shop somewhere. So yeah. it's like, even that idea of like menswear now is just so archaic that I think when people say we have to be safe for menswear, mm. you're, you're instantly scaling back your creativity because you don't want to alienate people. Uh, if, I think that's kind of going. But I think even this, like, you can imagine anybody wearing it. Like, those trousers, it's well, so hard as a man to find trousers like that. They're just that's really what cool. I wanted to say, because I've seen almost all the collection these three days, and this one, for me, is the most non-binary. binary Because I can see people, young people, probably that's the only difference. Yeah. It could be a girl or a boy. It doesn't make any difference, even in the cut of it. This kind of sportswear, well, I think what, why it's so, so good you've... is because all of these clothes Perea would wear herself. Yeah. And I feel like um, knowing the way that she dresses, 
it's really a lot of this has actually came from her looking at what she actually wears from her own wardrobe and reinterpreting that with um, the kind of codes of what she's been doing. And that's why it feels kind of fresh because it has, it's, it feels very personal to me. Um, and I think uh, that's why I also now see stuff that I would buy and wear with my own kind of identity. Um, but also like at the fashion awards, she was wearing like this amazing um, silk kind of uh, suit, really formal suit that the had a Persian like um, printed uh, undersuit to it, mm. which was really special. Um, I think it's, it is really clear that this more formal uh, wear dressing is kind of interesting her at the moment. Um, I love the all white look in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like structure to it. The neat. Yeah, that's very good. It feels like the, the cut has moved forward as well, I think, quite dramatically. The what? The, the cut of the clothes, mm. the refinement in the cut, I think, um, is really noticeable. Yeah, there's a lot of work in that jacket, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, that takes time to get right. I also where, think it ties where, into that, like, if you look at Converse and that's, like, obviously collaborations, I think, are the way that designers can make money without yeah. Yeah. having to kind of compromise their creativity. Yeah. But even if you look, I mean, there was that, the thing of, like, the Iranian print with the American heritage of Converse. That's kind of, it's a collaboration, but it's still very much reads true to her. And it's also, if you look at the aesthetic, it is kind of like that very relaxed silhouette, that kind of like skater boy baggy trouser. Yeah. And I love that she's really kind of leaned into that. I it's think probably my favorite Converse collaboration. Mm. And Converse of love it as well because I think it's so happy. Really beautiful. Yeah, and it's yeah. just yeah. natural craft how, how, that goes how it came about as well. I think, I mean, yeah. yeah. Say again, sorry? It's so natural how it came about. I think, you know, it was kind of created by herself in a way, yeah. and then Converse, you know, saw it. So they like, loved wow. the print and yeah. said, they loved it. I want, it? I, yeah, exactly. You know, we want to be part of this. Which yeah, is great. She hand cuts all of the pattern pieces, literally herself, and then hand sews them on top of the Converse for the shows. So it's like each oh, pair really? takes, yeah, each pair takes like three hours. Converse so did really cool stuff as well. Like yeah. They did the things like Fringe and Wang. That's yeah. where I was yeah. earlier, that's why I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be like this when it's commercial. No, but um, the, whole, the whole base of the, the collaboration came from her sitting in her studio, hand cutting all of the pieces and then patchworking them onto the shoes. And then that's where they became really, really interested by it. So it's kind of grown from that point of like craftsmanship, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. We didn't know all of that. Yeah, you always go in there, there'll be boxes. You're our insider. Just to <laughs> <laughs> I have to have no. Do you have other scoops and secrets? Uh. <laughs> Did she eat for breakfast? Well, well, <laughs> I wanted to know also, what is it with these incredible women doing fantastic menswear, and we could quote, you know, from, from Perea to uh, Bianca Sunders, mm. whose presentation yeah. this morning was really extraordinary to, you know, Martin Rose yeah. and, and Grace. Was and Grace. And so what, I don't know, maybe it's a stupid question, but... It's been a standard practice for men to make clothes for women for like decades. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's been a standard practice for men to make clothes for women for decades. Yeah, exactly. Like female designers, like even like Maria Dior, that was like a landmark moment. So I think there's very much this yeah. idea that like... Which is ridiculous, yeah, by it's the done. way. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, I think you can definitely bring a different insight because... Like I said, people are relaxing now. And if you kind of like approach something with the way that you would wear something, young people, just people in general, like even people that want to mix and match and don't want to have like a set look, they don't shop by divisions anymore. That's where I wanted to go. I think mm. the fact that now women are keen on working on menswear, it's mm. bringing it forward in a different way. Given like a new uh, interest I'm not taking mention. anything away from men's <laughs> <laughs> non-binary menswear, but I mean, don't you think so? It's like this movement towards who cares? And they all have their own heritage behind them, which I think brings yeah. something really special. And that's amalgamated in these, you know, where they live in London as well. And I think South London's really influenced Perea's work and uh, Bianca's work. She also lives around the corner from both of us. So um, there's a really exciting group of really young women that are uh, Would you say South London is a great influence? Where, uh, yeah, I think so. I really don't know. I'm not doubting it. I don't know what it means. Yeah. South as well, yeah. It's so it's, different. It's I can see attitude. it in terms of, yeah, the, the clothes and the yeah. way they fit the boys. That it's like they've been influenced by the guys that they see around the corner and on yeah. the streets around them. Not necessarily saying that they're very different to East London boys, but it's just that certain community. It's like, I don't know. Relax. I see it. I see it. I don't know what it is. And yeah, you can't really define it. Yeah. But 
it has a certain peckham edge to it. And, yeah, exactly. And it's, yeah. Like, yeah. it's particularly in the fact that the, the trousers, are, the tailoring to them, it's, yeah. a, it's a straight, is that leg, like straight it's leg, not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's still quite formal, but then you've got that like kind of half puffer. And are those hints to women's wear, you think? Those two girls, they wear fantastic yeah, looks. Yeah, I mean, Priya would be great doing women's wear anyway because she, I feel like a lot of what she's already done in this, this collection isn't is about. translated. Is it not? No, it's not. Oh, really? That's amazing. He's a very beautiful boy. Did a show with him uh, for Iceberg and everyone really? was just putting him in a different look. I was like, no, that's, he's in the boy's look. <laughs> very look good. Yeah. Very good look, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I do also really love the gloves. That's yeah, also a bit of a South thing. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. South. Like, and they're like commercial yeah. and like they're yeah. like a like, they're a way to buy into the thing at the start of the show of the, one of the boys putting them on and I was like, that's oh, cool. business woman Perea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um it's just can, a nod to keeping the print in there without it being sort of too again like, yeah. really encompassing. It's not, you know, that you could have executed those trousers in in, in, in the print, but it wasn't it's about too much, no, but, then it's too many. You know, but, yes. I, but it's great that that thread's still there. And it'll be a low price point piece. So yeah, I'm like her following, yeah, yeah definitely. So what, is it expensive? What's the price uh, level of this? Uh, no, it's not, it's not like a, um, I mean, I think in terms of like, obviously the jersey and stuff, it's not, it's, it would be entry level at this sort of, yeah, in terms of the price. No, yeah. But it's accessible. So it's kind of, you know, I think, so at the moment, you know, jersey's a bit of a crazy thing in terms of the, the top end of the, the marketplace is it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, for, for Priya to kind of enter the market, we had it first season for autumn into 18 for us, so just the season passed. Um, you know, they were the first things to go, as an example, because it is an entry point into the brand. Yeah. Um, fans want to get into it, and obviously, you know, tease an easy ground. Is it recognizable? I don't, I don't have that jersey picture in my brain, so I don't remember. Can we? It see, goes to was the. Was it on the catwalk of last season? Yeah, there, there would have been a few in the presentation Let me last see season. Last season, thank you. But they're, I mean, 80, 80 pounds for a t-shirt. Yeah. Okay. So and what about what about a jacket or a pair of trousers? I think the trousers, I mean, they're two, between 200 and 300, depending on the detail. Um, oh, it's really not expensive. Yeah. I mean, it's contemporary also in price. Yeah, exactly. So we call it contemporary for, but it's, yeah. that's... It yeah. is as well. Some brands fit into that market, some don't. It's contemporary yeah, exactly. in price. Yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, for, for some of the outerwear pieces, I think the, the, over, the, the oversized all over print Parker this season was more on the 900 pound mark. So obviously the outerwear okay. is going to be there, but I think the ceiling is a thousand across all categories. Obviously, it will, may change this season because there was definitely a lot more work in the product um, in terms of fabrication, um, you know, design element to it. So I think there may be some pieces that are getting close to that or maybe over this season. Um, but I think that's important as well for the development. You know, now, now, she's, now she's got that following. I think it's important that, that people know there's more craftsmanship in terms of the product and therefore you can elevate the prices. And so which one was the T-shirt that... Um I mean, this is spring nineteen. So, I mean, we the one before to the yeah, it'd be the kind of autumn winter eighteen collection, um, and we did an exclusive T-shirt, just okay. kind of print on the front. Okay. I mean, I didn't like <laughs> but, I, but, I, but that's very interesting because it means that if people go and 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 buy and you sell out a T-shirt with a print that reminds of a brand, I'm saying something quite trite, but actually it means that the brand has arrived in a way because yeah. it means that there is a desirability to show off that you have that brand or to want to belong to that tribe. Yeah. And uh, if in, what, six collection, three years, uh, it's already there, I think it's a huge success. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I mean, the track pants were great as well from, from autumn, winter. You'll see them on here, the, the, the beige pants with the ones. detailing yeah. on. Yeah. These, they sold out straight away as well, so. These ones? Yeah. So, the and, and they're not entry price point. They, you know, they still have a restaurant. And, and they're not so easy because <coughs> they, this, for me, this was more heavily Persian or Middle Eastern. Yeah. Mm. It's more subtle now. Definitely. Um, I mean, this you, was, this was in a prefer? restaurant over in West yeah. London. Yeah. So um, I was just asking yeah, where it was shot. Yeah. Um, would also, and that was where the presentation was as well. Also the clothes. I mean. What, what do you prefer, more heavily uh, heritage-oriented or subtle? I think if you're going to widen the customer base, you need to, you need to kind of widen there you go. You oh. know, the, the sphere of it is in terms of, you know, not every piece has to have it on. Um, I think the subtle nods in, the, in the, the Autumn Winter 19 collection are a great way to continue it through and make sure that you know it's a, a parrier piece. But it's also important to make sure that there's some other elements in there that, 
you know, people that don't want to print, for example, still can get hold of some these, these collection was almost political for me. She's always been really yeah. political. Yeah, but now it's more subtle, and I think commercially, but also taste-wise, to if you want to have, as you say, a wider audience, it's much, it's, it's, it's better, because mm. this one is very niche. I think there's also probably, I know for um, myself and Tom, there's a maturity that I felt, and I've seen Perea feel as well as you kind of go through the last two years, we started at the same time, you become more mature of the way that you're putting your content out there and the way that you're putting collections together. Mm. So I think that's also kind of been an inevitable thing that it's grown now to this point where she's been able to refine the content of the collection and the way that she's using things like the print that still get her message across, but they're in more of a subtle way to the consumer. Um, because she herself feels more mature about the way, the direction she's going in. Isn't she happier also? I think sometimes I see collections and I feel heavy, like a heavy aura around it, which is not the way it's presented, the light in the room, no, it's that you feel some heaviness in the designer's soul. Well, it's tough. This, you know? But yeah. this is happier, this is lighter, and I think it, it pays off. Yeah, I think it, it's, it's been a really, really tough journey for, so, you know, coming out of a university that's not St. Martin's, getting no press from graduate collection. It's a very difficult journey to get to where either of us have got today. I think um, Perea should be really proud of where she's got to, but also she knows that now. And that's why there's a real confidence in it, because it's taken until now for her to realise, I think, what she's achieved. Um, and now I think she's Very making really confident steps because she knows that she's got the platform. So and you, like, kind of, yeah. It also seems to me like this whole emphasis, if you were talking about the collection being less political, I think the politics seem to come from like when she does media interviews or when yeah. she kind of does yeah. social media. And I respect that a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's like even with this, I think there's this element of wanting to dictate your own narrative, mm. by asking people to yeah, put definitely. the things away. Yeah. And not. I was just about now. to say the same even thing. I don't that, think she yeah. drives that narrative. I think it's just like, yeah, it's driven at her. It's yeah. driven um, at her, but and, you, know, and, you know, she can only answer questions that she's given. So it's kind I of mean, like. I mean, don't get me wrong. I believe that fashion being such a huge platform and giving such a huge possibility to talk to young people <laughs> and to shift generation into different gears, um, I believe that you have the duty in a way to be living in the world you live and being political. But I think it's better to have it in your narrative, in your attitude to things, <laughs> in, and more subtly in what you put on the It's not forced and it's not an obligation. It's, it's yeah. probably, yeah, I called it happier and you said it more confident mm. and probably you're right, but it's a little bit linked, you know, it's a little bit linked. but. Um, I have to admit that I've noticed her, and of course, and I read about fashion and I talk about fashion, so, but this is the first time that I'm really excited about what she did. The thing is, like, I think if you're any person that's in the media that is kind of non-normative in any way, there's almost like this political narrative put onto you. So I think it's really interesting that like, she does it in the prints and stuff, but she does it on her own terms. And when she talks in interviews, she's really kind of like, so it's about destigmatizing the narrative in the Middle East and all of those kind of things. And it's like, that's where you've really got the space to express yourself. Yeah, but it's dangerous because you don't want to become that, you know, the, yeah. yeah. But also yeah. you don't want to be then, then put in a, in a box like Middle East and that's the style and you can never do something different. The thing you know? is, or you, or you don't want to be always... featured for that reason either in a way yeah. that, yeah. there's a exactly. designer from a new region that, this, we, you know, you know, in, you know, Georgia's a good example, right? You know, a little, yeah. little while ago. It just kind of that happens, oh, we're going to do a Georgia feature on designers from Georgia because of one designer that comes from that region and all of a sudden, you know, buyers want to go and look at that area. But the only um, reason that that's happened is because it's been such a historic lack of diversity. So it's like you can understand it in one sense, but it's like this thing, if we talk about, for example, like um, a queer in the shop floor and making sure that if, if you're trans and non-binary, it can be difficult to shop because where do you shop and where you face discrimination? Like Travis Alabanza with the top short dressing rooms. Like there's yeah. so much politics into it. So even just like relaxing the silhouettes and blending menswear and women's wear, if you can talk about then like ungendering the shopping space, that's a political act in and of itself, but it's not no doubt. particularly like in your face. It's just, it's built into her. So like, her politics aren't necessarily just based on her identity. She also speaks on male fragility and mm -hmm. how, yeah, she's trying to 
blur the boundaries, but in a way that is, she still has a dress there. It's not like she's put a girl in the same things that the man is wearing, but then the men, it's, it's interchangeable. I could see myself wearing every single one of those outfits. Yes. And also, like, the models are very beautiful. It's like, it's a very kind of, like, natural makeup, and it kind of, like, it's less, it's more something that you could incorporate into your everyday life. If you're a man, like, you have to buy male makeup. It's just eyeliner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's always been eyeliner. Yeah, I, I'm interested in what Helene just said about the fragility, because that's been one of the recurring themes of these three days. Yeah. Um, I've been a lot backstage and listening to designers describing what they did, and from uh, Bianca Saunders, even in her notes to, I mean, from, let's say, from Craig Green, who said it very clearly, to Bianca, to even Samuel Ross this morning. I mean, they all say, for men, emotion cannot mean weakness. Mm -hmm. We don't want that anymore. So a man can be fragile. And so Craig had mm -hmm. these backs of the coats that were looking like glass or porcelains, you know, so like translating fragility into prints or you know, men being vulnerable, men, Bianca's men in their bedroom dressed up to the nines here, but then in boxer shorts yeah. and being almost exposed. So, you know. Yeah, in that image there. there yeah. yeah, and um, it, it, it comes back a lot. I didn't feel the same fragility in Priya, pri, sorry, Priya collection. I felt sweetness. I felt Which is fragility, a little bit different. Though, I felt fragility in the terms of on the conveyor belt. Yeah. I felt that that you kind went, of fumbling you... around of like almost falling off the Especially belt when they were going with the yeah. phone and yeah. kind and of could distracted. Look at it, look okay, and you know that's sort yeah, of, that sort yeah. Of yeah, and not, not even just in the overt sense of, okay, social media, you've got your phones glued to you, you wake up in the morning and that's the first thing you pick up. More even in the sense of it was a distraction, but a, a self-imposed one. They're trying to walk, but then this and obstruction is there, yeah. It was especially in the, in the finale where they were walking against back the against the machine. And you couldn't see a strong effort, but it was a little bit more, you know. In but that's the subtlety in, in the whole collection, mm. in the fact there isn't a strong effort, but you have to work to notice it. Mm. Which she said in the sense of, put your phones down and put them in the bag. And nobody did it, no one did except it. me. <laughs> And also, it's such a great message, that, um, that element of fragility, because menswear for so long has been very rigid. And even if we talk about the big push behind LCM, um, menswear really, as a, as a really viable event in and of itself, it's taken a long time to come around. And I think that is because we have this idea that men are quite fragile, and that men don't really want to push themselves out of their boxes, because it's all tied into this, this element of how you're perceived by society. So you have to fit into these boxes. That's normative. Yeah, like masculinity and all of these things. Yeah, so it's good that it's in men is now not only accepted, but it's almost a must. You know, yeah. It's almost yeah. what you need but to... But then is that still too contrived? Because, for, OK, I'm just now just going to do a little plug. I just uh, published a, um, a book on men and mental health. So it's called Him and His, but there's not a specific focus on mental health on the cover. It's about what masculinity and identity meals, means to the male. And it, that is any person. So not necessarily looking at the heteronormative definitions, but looking at how you express yourselves in those terms. So either one of you guys. So individually. Individually, yeah. exactly. So the book doesn't actually have any um, separators. There isn't a filter in, OK, this piece, these are all pieces by Punjabi men. There's 120 contributors. Or these are all pieces by, I don't know, black men and talking about their masculinity, they all overlap because there's, our identities are so multifaceted. So it, I don't know, our sexuality, our race, our gender, and how we define our masculinity, so different. So that's what fragility is. It's like fragility isn't this all encompassing, I cry, this performative act. Mm. It's not even what we feel inside, it's something that is expressed in so many different ways. And I think that's what these designers are doing. Samuel Ross, for example. Yeah, absolutely. And his last collection with the, with the... Um, yeah, but he did it this morning as well, and Craig did it beautifully, you know, like this emotional... I was saying before that his show was, for me, was holistically emotional. And it was still very strong, and I believe that emotion is strength, strength and yeah. especially being able to show your emotion. So some people refuse, they don't want you to be emotional, I think that's a problem. I think emotion is... But it's the subtlety strange. in showing it as well. 
So it's not necessarily so overt, again, it's in the crying or this loud declaration of, yeah. we are not fragile, we are like, we are strong, or the opposite, in fact, it's just this kind of, I don't know, it's, it's, it's fluid, it's simple, it's like... The thing is, like, you talk about clothing building an identity, yeah. and it's like, if you shop in menswear for a long time, if you look at fashion as like, your like, arsenal of tools to build your identity, menswear is so limited. Like, even those like, printed trousers, like silk printed trousers, is like a radical thing for menswear, because it just don't exist. If you're a guy that doesn't want to wear like, I don't know, X, Y, Z, like tailoring, even that, like bringing like a new suit jacket, it's the, been that's so That's what's so exciting about yeah. what uh, people like Priya and Bianca have done this season is that it can't just be brands like mine or Charles's that's mm. pushing this other aspect of how a man can be identified. And it makes me really confident in the future of um, what men's Man is putting out in London, yeah. because you, this is the way that any man is going to start questioning how they can dress, yeah. because it's going to take slow steps. You know, I don't expect everyone to wear one of my bicycle slip dresses every day because it's not <laughs> going to happen tomorrow. So by these, this effect happening across brands and across brands that are relatable to all different um, genders, all different ages, all different ethnicities, and men from every kind of cultural, social background, it's going to then develop into a real movement, I think, which yeah. is really exciting. Which is influencing, I, I strongly believe that London men's influences men's globally. Weeks, Definitely. globally. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, and it's starting from Craig that you can see some yeah. Craig Green's influence and inspiration yeah, everywhere. Um, it comes from here, and uh, all this movement you were beautifully explaining right now, they're now, you know, going down everywhere like mm. a snowball, and finally, you know, finally you, you will be able to buy yeah, we need to loosen. silk trousers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to loosen the codes of menswear because it's been so, like, this is what men want, this is what men wear, this is what women wear. So, so and you can see in so every yeah. Yeah. like, what, um, what's happening with Margiela and John, what's happening with Kim at Dior, so it, across all these big brands that really have been influenced to change the way that people feel about buying clothes in a store and give men confidence to buy something new, it's not just us that are having to kind of push it, it's growing to a bigger and wider audience, which is really exciting. And becoming more commercial. Yeah, I think the Asian market is pushing that as well because I think Asian men are a little more confident in, They're much in more open the way they perceive yeah. what they can wear. Even if you look at Yoji and this idea of like bringing like Japanese masculinity, I even know even that's like a loaded term, they but... They put men yeah. in skirts whole... in, yeah. for a hundred years. I mean, yeah. it's like the samurai warrior. Yeah. 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 And There's the nothing is, new for them. Yeah, and even Yoji was described in very racialized terms, and there was like a lot of cultural misunderstanding, and it was like a lot of it just needs to be about we need to really abolish our ideas of what menswear should look like and just accept things for what they are. Like, this is a beautiful piece. Like, these are beautiful pieces. I can wear them, you can wear them, anybody can wear them. Yeah. Well, so we're pretty positive about this, not only for what it was, but what it can represent. Mm. Absolutely. We want a last word from the retailers. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we the, see success to, to kind in of the future. Move on from that point. Yeah, I think so, definitely. Um, and I think the great thing here is that you don't need to be head to toe in, in a look from here to be able to, to pull it off. Um, there's definitely pieces that you can transfer and link in with other brands, which I think, you know, when you're a, when you're a multi-brand store, as we are, um, I think it's important to, to, for, for a brand to have a place, um, but then also kind of sing on its own as well. Who's competing with? If I mean, in terms have, of, you know... No, no, I mean, it's interesting to know the business side of it as well. I mean, the area that we kind of, that, that Prayer fit, fits in, you know, there's you know, the bigger ones, which are like the, you know, the Off-Whites, the, the Heron Prestons and, and that group. And then you have, um, we have Martine Rose in that arena as well, because I think that's definitely kind of, in terms of the way Martin she... Martine Rose is a bit more expensive, isn't it? Yes, but again, contemporary is not price point for us. It's more about aesthetic. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Right. Um, and it sits in that arena, and the next Infinitas is another one that we, you know, it's an Australian designer, but that fits in that realm where it's uh, sim similar to, to Perry in a way that he, he's kind of, he's Australian and surfer, he has a surfer element for his collection, but it's a very kind of, you know, baggy trouser, there's utility through there, um, kind oh, of nods, nods to quite, quite, quite manly product mm. um, that, you know, I say, in, in a way that it's kind of notorious in its, its use, you know, in the past. 
Um, but I mean, that translates a little, little bit to a, to a wider customer base. So it's kind of, it's, it's, it's got its signature, but um, it's got kind of longevity, and I think that's the important thing for it. That's good, so you're positive yeah, about definitely. the sustainable, sustainability of your brand. For sure. Great, I think it's a great note to end on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Thanks. Bye.